Hi guys, this is gonna be short and sweet. And I will get this posted tomorrow, but I'm out here by the lake to say goodbye. I am in just about a half hour to an hour. I will be my summer on Mackinac Island is over. My boss decided, even though she knew I was leaving next week, my parents are coming up to get me next week, he decided today that after my shift, to have me come back to the office and tell me that she wanted me gone. That was basically it. She, she wanted me to leave. Pretty much what she said. They were, she wanted me to leave, they were letting me go. Because apparently I, I did not fit in. <laughs> and what gets me is that I worked myself to the point of exhaustion at this job. I was making myself work, so. My parents are on the way to get me and yeah, it's time to say goodbye. probably guess I am not on the island simply by looking at my surroundings I am back home um, you probably already knew that from the beginning clip but um, yeah so I am home as you saw it was my boss basically called me in and told me they didn't want me anymore on the third and um, because apparently I was having attitude problems and stuff like that. And what really gets me is she informed me that she wanted me gone on the 4th. She expected my parents to drop everything they were doing to come up and get me on one of the busiest travel days of the year in Michigan. Um, going to be one of the busiest days on the island. And she expected my parents to come up and use that day to come get me. And when I told her... I thought I said it very politely that my parents just can't come at the drop of a hat to come and get me. I had handed in my notice and said July 13th was going to be, July 12th would be my last day, July 13th I would be leaving very purposefully because my mom had asked for July 13th for that to be her day off, for the 13th or 14th off, to come and see me, though that 13th for a very specific reason. My mom has to ask for her time off so many weeks in advance. She has, and it's the same with my dad. My dad and my mom both work at Walmart. And at Walmart, you have to ask for your time off, I wanna say at least four weeks in advance. And my parents very specifically were going and asking for time off as early as they could for certain days so that they could come up and see me. So they already had, my mom and my dad both already had the 13th and 14th of July off. They already knew that because they had asked for that time off. I think my mom asked for it off in May, okay? And so my mom was asking for time off for July, August, and September, and even October, all the way back um, in May. That is when my mom was asking for time off. And I had explained this multiple times to both my boss and the managers that my parents that my parents have to ask for time off so far in advance. And that made it difficult, of course, with my dad. I talked about this, my dad coming up to visit me last month, and it made it very difficult because originally he was supposed to come on Father's Day, but I wouldn't have had the schedule to see whether I had Father's Day off or not until the 16th. So I would have known if I had the 17th off until the 16th, which is why when I found out I had the 15th off, we just changed it and he came up on the 15th because that made it so much more easier. So they already knew this, but um, 
I don't know why she still thought that my parents, probably because my mom, I made no secret that my mom was a training coordinator, probably because my mom was that position that she could just do whatever she wanted. My mom can't. And um, apparently she thought maybe my parents weren't hard workers because they were coming up. I mean, my mom and my dad dropped me off in April. My entire family came up in May. My dad came back up in June. My mom was coming up in July. And I had made no secret that my parents, one or both of my parents, or for that case, my entire family, would be coming up at least once a month for the entire time I was up there. So maybe she thought that because my family was going to come up at least once a month to visit, that maybe that they could get all this time off. And they simply can't. So, um... It, it was hard. As you can tell from that first clip, I was actually pretty devastated. I mean, one, being told I was being let go, getting fired. And then to have her then on top of that scold me for having an attitude when I'm trying to explain to her, you know, it's kind of hard for me to get a hold of my parents. Both my parents work. My mom is working full time. My dad is basically working full time. They're working for Walmart, which is a great corporation, but there is rules. And my parents have to follow these rules. I have rules, so do my parents. Um, it's not that easy for me to get a hold of my parents when they are at work. One of her things was I was texting on my job. Was I texting on my job? Yes. Um, but then again, there was also circumstances that I tried to explain. My parents like to be in contact with me when I'm away from them. You know, this just isn't something that happens. My mom will be at work, and she'll be texting my brother and I when she has a moment, um, usually on her breaks, to make sure that we're okay, that we don't need anything. If we do need something, do we want to come to the store? You know, that's just how my parents are. My parents are kind, are, are very much like to be in contact. And I've said that before. I enjoy that. I know I'm 30 years old, but I like having that constant contact with my parents. It's why I trust my mom and my dad so much. My parents trust me so much and my brother so much because we keep them in the loop pretty much about my, our lives. You know, my mom does not have to tell us when she is working. We are both adults, but she does. Um, you know, my mom does not have to tell me half the stuff she does because it doesn't really, but she does. And I tell my mom everything. So my parents and I, we are in each other's orbit. And that's something I enjoy. And most of the time when I was texting, it was like they were checking on me, making sure I was okay, because during the last few weeks, I was really struggling. I was pushing myself to exhaustion and beyond, and when that happens, <laughs> my stress-induced anxiety decides that it doesn't like to play nice anymore, and for the most part, I have that under control, but when I get exhausted, I kind of, my control over that slips. So I was starting to get aches, pains, I went to work one day, I was dizzy and nauseous, <laughs> and... That's when my parents made the decision to bring me home on July 13th and not wait till August, not take that chance and have me be worse. So, oh, mom's home. Mom came home and I got some stuff from my aunt. Really cute stuff. I got like a little mini like tea set collection from Poster of Japan, so it's really cute. Anyway, so um, yeah, back to the whole debacle. So, my boss, I finally got, when I finally explained to her, it's not like my parents can come and get me and it might be hard for me to get a hold of them. She's like, okay, well, here's the thing. I could stay in the house where I was staying until my parents were able to come and get me. But I would no longer be working. So I'd be able to stay in the house, but I would not have a job, which means, well, I would have, if I had stayed, I would probably have still gone through with my 4th of July plans, even though I told my mom when she called me later that I really didn't feel like it. And... I probably would have spent the day just biking around and doing whatever I wanted. Um, and I actually had plans for both the 4th of July and yesterday I was supposed to go into Mac City too. So on the 4th of July I was supposed to be doing all this stuff and then yesterday I was supposed to go into Mac City <laughs> um, to waste my ferry passes. And so I'm like, okay, that, that I think my parents can. Until she threw this in, I would still be expected to pay rent for the housing provided by an employer whom I'm no longer working for. So she would be taking the rent out of my final paycheck, which means I would have no final paycheck. So, yeah, I was completely devastated. I called my mom, left a voicemail, called my dad. He was actually on his way to get my brother from his job. He called my mom, went to go see my mom. Um, she called me. I explained to her what was happening. I said dad was on his way to talk to her, and she got a hold of me a little bit later and told me to... Um, finished getting my stuff around. I, they were 
coming up, they were leaving. They were stopping by my mom here to get a garbage bag for my bedding and winter gear and um, another suitcase for me to be able to pack all my clothes because I had so much stuff and they were coming up. So my parents actually left here about by 5.30 on July 3rd, flew all the way up to Mackinac City, which is over 200 miles away from where we live, so that's about three hours. Got up here, got up to Mackinac City, and we're on the 7.30 boat to the island, and they got on the island at 8 o'clock. We went directly to where I was staying, loaded everything up in the wagon, got all the bags, packed everything, and we headed directly down to the dock. And we were off the, we were on the 9 o'clock ferry, and we were back on the mainland by 9.30. So, yeah. Like, I still can't believe, I still can't believe now that my parents dropped everything and just blew up and came and got me. And, because it is not cheap. Um, and I got them fudge, of course, because I, I was leaving, I was going to get them fudge, and yeah. So, I was actually back home in Midland at 1 a.m. on the 4th, so... I've been here since the 4th, and am I sad that it turned out like this? Yeah, I, I am really sad, you know? I loved Mackinac Island. I loved, you can tell by the videos I posted from me, like, biking around the island, from exploring it. I loved it so much. There's so much history there. There's so much nature. Yes, I'm allergic to pretty much everything outdoors that has to do with trees and flowers and stuff, but... I was still able to enjoy it. I was able to have fun. I mean, I made a few really great friends while I was up there. I mean, one of them, we actually had plans for July 5th. He was going to meet me when I got out of work at 5, and we were going to go do the Haunted Theater together because it was something I always wanted to do. I'm just too chicken to do it by myself. So we were going to meet up. He got out at 4. I got out at 5. We were going to go do that together. And he even gave me a little Darth Vader candy-filled keychain to put on my bag because he knew how much I liked Star Wars. So he was a really great friend, and I didn't even get a chance to tell him goodbye, because I just had to go. And so I'm really upset, especially because when I started this job, this job was something amazing. This job I, I fell in love with. I fell in love with some of the stuff we were selling. I, I fell in love with the Polish pottery, with the Toski stones. I love talking about that stuff. I love talking about the island, about Michigan, about the history. I loved passing on the knowledge. I loved, I loved telling visitors from out of state, um, what, how to pronounce Mackinac. And I, I still cannot to this day, can't believe being told by one visitor from down south that, from out uh, down south, like Alabama south, that it was so cute when she heard me say that I was from down state. <laughs> like, so it was just this really amazing experience, but I don't know what happened, I guess things change and I don't know you know I'm glad I did this experience I think it taught me a lesson um am I going to do this again no I my mom already said that and I don't want to do it again last year I said I didn't want to do it again but then I decided you know what you can't just base an entire summer on one lousy experience you know that made that and after talking to a few people I realized that was kind of an exception so I decided to do it again this summer and in many ways it was better, but in the end it still turned out to have the same ending in that there is a lot of unknown going into this and I don't want to scare people away from going to Mackinac Island. I mean, I still love it. If I get the chance to go up next year for a day trip or something, I will take it. Am I going to go back up there to work? No. I'm not going to go back up there to work. I think the reason is because I know too much and now that I know a lot more than I, now that I, after these two years, I have enough to know that it takes a very special kind of person to spend an entire summer on that island working, and it's not me. I mean, I told this to my parents, working on Mackinac, the, to be a summer employee on Mackinac Island and to fit in, you have, it's kind of an exclusive club. It's kind of an exclusive clique. You know, you really have to have done it before, and if you're one of the new bees, they're like, no, they're not really that interested in you. And there's a lot of stuff that goes down that they don't like to talk about that people don't know. And I'm not going to talk about that here because I really don't want to scare people away from visiting Mackinac Island. Just to visit Mackinac Island, I think everybody should do. 
It's an amazing place with so much history. It's so much fun. I enjoy it, and I love visiting, so. But I would never work there again. I am I'm ready to just settle down and get back to where it is, so. That's it. I'm back home in Midland, unemployed, of course, but I'm going to start job hunting next week, big time. I applied to a couple places while up north, but now that I'm back home, it'll be easier to do because now I can skip, go ahead and schedule interviews, and I can schedule them relatively quickly. Um, I do have one plan that if I haven't really heard back from any job leads by like September, like late August, um, early September, I'm actually going to call Mike who is, um, runs the Halloween store and from Muskegon, they actually, that's where I worked from September to November last year for a few months was at the Halloween store. And it was actually one of my favorite jobs. I'm not kidding. For a girl who doesn't really celebrate Halloween, I loved working at the Halloween store. It was so much fun. I loved the experience and I honestly would love to do it again. You know, if there's a seasonal job, I would love to do that or work at a Christmas store. So do I like seasonal jobs? I do. Um, is it something I could see myself viably doing for a lifetime? No. Because for summer, you have to travel all the time. So um, I don't want to be, I think, just to give me a little bit of edge, if the Halloween store does come back, I'm going to work there. But that is all up in the air because the mall has been bought by a new owner, and they want to bring in, like, an entertainment, like a movie theater, housing, stuff like that. So that's really exciting. Our movie theater is going to be, re-vented, re-vent, um, going to be redone with, like, luxury reclining seats and all new food options. So that's really exciting. It's a really exciting time. And I do have a lot of plans on that at home. Um, as of right now, I am probably going to go to Star Wars night in two weeks, which is really, really exciting because I had so much fun last year. I really want to redo my picture with Darth Vader where I look like a total dork because I had no clue what I was doing because I was like, oh my God, I'm actually meeting Darth Vader. So, um, I'm really excited for that. Um, I'm excited to go back to job hunting. My mom, I'm so proud of her. My mom's going back to college to get her master's. So I'm really proud of my mom. My brother has his first job. I'm really proud of him for that. You know, I think... This experience, and the biggest news for me is, for fun, is that I have decided after years of indecision, after starting at Claire's and realizing how much I missed having my ears pierced, I'm going to go get my ears re-pierced. I'm going to have to get them done at Claire's because there's really the only other place is a tattoo shop and there's no way my mom is letting me go to a tattoo shop to get my ears re-pierced. But, um, yeah, after many years of telling me she didn't really want me to get my ears re-pierced, my mom is finally going to let me get my ears re-pierced. And I know you're thinking, Caitlin, you're 30. She said, yes, but... It is something I want to run by my mom first, cause <laughs> so she's letting me get my ears. She says it's okay, I can get my ears repaired. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, for those of you who haven't heard the story, I don't think I've ever really talked about it. I got my ears pierced when I was 12, um, and then just under a year later, I had my mom had me take out my earrings because this one got really, really, really badly infected. This one was okay. I thought it was an allergic reaction. My mom thinks it was, but. This ear was fine. It was just a little red and a little infected. But this one, once we took the earrings out, this one healed up completely. I just have like a little scar from the earring that you can't really see. This one was really badly infected to the point that you can see where, even that anyone can see where my earring was because it never fully healed all the way. So we, I want to get them re-pierced. So I'm going to get them re-pierced. I'm thinking this Wednesday maybe, next Wednesday. Hopefully I will be able to film that to you for you guys. I'm just hoping I don't have the same reaction I did when I was 12, because when I was 12, I was so freaking nervous about getting my ears pierced. My mom, we went to this place called the Piercing Disorder. I was so nervous. The ladies were so nice. They were cheering me on. I was squeezing my mom's hand so tightly. I was cutting off her circulation. And they did my um, right ear, and they did it, and they pierced it, and I went, ow is that all? And then they did my left ear and I went, ow, really? Seriously, is that all? Like, and they thought it was funny. Like I was so offended (laughs) that it didn't hurt more because I'm terrified of needles. And they did my ears. I'm like, really? That didn't hurt. Seriously? That's all the pain. So, so I'm going to get my ears pierced. Um, I'm not doing them. Last time I got them pierced, it was 24 karat gold, little ball studs. I'm not doing that this time. I went that through. Because I have sensitivity issues, I'm going to do stainless steel. And I'm not going to do like little ball studs. I'm actually going to do crystal crosses because you have to turn your earrings halfway, like I think three or four times a day. And um, rather than have my fingers get all slippery doing the little studs, I'm going to do crosses because I think they'd be easier to turn. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited about getting my ears repaired. I'm excited about Star Wars Night. I'm excited about the fact that I'm going to get um, Rebel Season 4 is coming out. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited that Solo is coming out. I know there's a lot of people out there saying Solo wasn't that good. I will say Solo is not my favorite Star Wars movie. 
However, I did enjoy Star Wars. I did, and I usually like Star Wars for the story, um, but for Solo, the story was okay. I think it would have been better if they had fleshed it out a little bit more, if they had more time to work on it, and I think the issue was originally Solo was supposed to come out in December, and they decided to do it in May for I don't know why, so I really think that having Solo come out in May after having all that issues with directors and stuff, it kind of... Uh, it kind of hurt them. I think if they had waited till December, I think Solo would have been a lot more better. And instead, they kept it in May. So I really honestly think they could have pushed Solo back, and it would have done a lot better. Would have been a lot better. But I did enjoy Solo. I did like it. I really loved the music. I loved um, the filming style. I I hate to say this. I actually liked the guy who played Han. I love the guy who played Han. I thought he was good. You know, I'm not one of those who went in there who got so disappointed when we saw the guy playing Han. I wasn't one of those people because. I knew that it wasn't going to be, it was going to be a different Han, and I knew it wasn't going to be Harrison Ford, so I was prepared for that, and because I think I was prepared for that, I enjoyed it so much more. So, um, yeah, it was really fun, it was really interesting, and answered a lot of my questions about the Falcon in particular, because I had quite a few. Um, like, what exactly was the Falcon saying that offended 3PO? Now I think I have an idea. <laughs> So, I, and I enjoyed Solo, and plus that was a really unique experience seeing it in Mackinac City. So, that was fun. I enjoyed Solo. I um, So, that comes out, I think, in September. Rebels comes out at the end of this month, and I just know when I see it, those last few episodes, I am going to freaking cry like a baby. Um, Thrawn Alliances comes out on the 23rd. I'm so looking forward to that. I saw the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive cover. Oh, my gosh, I want that cover. So, um, but I'm not going to Comic-Con. I am just looking forward to really being home, getting back into our routine. I'm looking forward to being a Midland girl again. So I have so I'm already making some plans for next month. So I'm ex I'm excited. I can't wait for this. I'm so glad to be home. I'm gonna start back up at church in a couple weeks. I'm gonna give myself a few weeks to um just get back in a routine, start job hunting, get myself out there. It's gonna be I'm just so glad to be home. I'm so glad I have such wonderful parents that did what they did, and I'm so lucky I had that experience, and yeah. This does mean vlogs are going to go back to being a little bit more boring, simply because I'm back home. <laughs> so vlogs might get a little bit more boring, but don't worry, there's still going to be lots of fun. So I just want to thank you guys, everyone, for your support. Um, it means so much to me. I'm just so happy to be back home. I'm so happy to be back surrounded by Star Wars because I have missed it. I have missed all my Star Wars stuff. So I'm, I'm happy to be back home in Midland, surrounded by family, by friends. I'm so happy to be back with my Star Wars stuff, with my books. I'm, I'm really looking forward to going back to church in a few weeks. I have missed it and I have just missed this. So I'm so glad to be home and I'm thanking you guys so much for all the love and support you have shown me. And I hope you continue to show me that love and support in the future. So I'm going to get going, guys. You all stay safe, stay sane, and I'm sending you all lots of love, hugs, and prayers. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.